Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India. You're watching South Asia Newsline and here are the top stories we're tracking for you on Tuesday, the 1st of August. Ruckus continues in Indian Parliament as government introduces Delhi Services Bill. Pakistan sees major fuel price hike to meet IMF terms. And Taliban calls for removal of sanctions in meeting with US officials. And now for all the details. The Indian Parliament witnessed tense political debate as the government introduced the Delhi Services Bill on Tuesday. The bill, which overrides the Supreme Court judgment, is aimed to grant the central government the authority over appointments and transfer of bureaucrats in the Delhi government. Opposition lawmakers raised questions over the legislative competence of the parliament on the matter, as it overrides the apex court order. In response, Home Minister Amit Shah termed the objections as political and devoid of any constitutional basis. He said the constitution has given the power to the parliament to pass any law regarding Delhi, which was also clarified in the Supreme Court judgment. Dusra mutta uthaya gaya Supreme Court ke judgment ka, jo hamare manye sansad BJD ke bataya sarvoch naray nyayale ke pera chhe judgment ke pera chhe pachanve. और पैरा 164 एफ इसके संबंध में सर्वोच्च न्यायालय ने स्पष्ट किया है कि संसद दिल्ली संघ राज्य क्षेत्र के लिए कोई भी कानून बना सकता है अतः ये सारे जो ऑब्जेक्शन दिए गए हैं वो राजनीतिक है इसका कोई संवैधानिक आधार नहीं है ये जो बिल है ये पूरी तरीके से माननीय सर्वोच्च न्यायालय के पांच जजों के फैसले के खिलाफ है दिल्ली का ऑर्डिनेंस पूरी तरीके से संविधान के खिलाफ है इस मुल्क के फेडरल स्ट्रक्चर के खिलाफ है आप कोई भी कॉन्स्टिट्यूशनल अमेंडमेंट बगैर दो तिहाई बहुमत के कर ही नहीं सकते तो ये गैर संवैधानिक बिल है और लोकसभा में भले ही पास कर लें किसी भी तरीके से ये लोग लेकिन जब ये राज्यसभा में आएगा तो विपक्षी दलों के पास इतना बहुमत है कि इस बिल को वहां पे हराएंगे गिराएंगे Moving on, authorities have imposed a curfew in the district of India's Haryana state after communal violence resulted in the killing of at least five people, including two home guards personnel and left several injured. The clashes started when a group was holding a religious procession, shop fronts, vehicles and even public buses were destroyed during the clashes. The state government has suspended internet services and educational institutions have been shut in nearby towns of Gurugram and Faridabad. Thousands of police and paramilitary forces have also been deployed in the district. Look, the kind of violence that has happened, this is not a big violence. And where I know, that the two communities of the two communities have been living in a long time with love. They have been living in a long time with love. They have been living in a long time with love. They have been living in a long time. And Pakistan on Tuesday announced a big hike in petrol and diesel prices in line with the objectives of an International Monetary Fund bailout program. Petrol prices would be raised by 19.95 Pakistani rupees and diesel by 19.90 rupees per litre, Finance Minister Ishaq Dar informed by a televised address. He said Pakistan is not in a position to deviate from the IMF's standby agreement finalized after eight months of negotiations over fiscal discipline. Islamabad has committed to a petroleum levy of up to 50 rupees per litre alongside a string of painful measures including raising extra revenues, increasing energy prices and a market-based exchange rate which has already fueled historic inflation. This is likely to have political implications for the government just months before a general election. Moving on, the battle over school curriculum between education boards has left the students in Pakistan occupied Kashmir worried for their future. The academic years is passed just like that with no clear picture so far. A report. 
Students in Pakistan-occupied Kashmir have raised concern over the ongoing battle between education boards over the syllabus that is affecting their studies, while the booksellers are worried for the stock of textbooks they have purchased for sale. Some students and parents had already bought books according to the previous syllabus, but there is still no clarity about the curriculum. They lamented this seems to be a new law to waste the academic year of the students in POK, which is already backward. ये भी अभी लगता है कि अगर अगस्त तक फैसला ना हुआ तो ये कहीं आगे दिसंबर तक या दोबारा नजर सानी में सुप्रीम कोर्ट में ही ना चला जाए तो फेडरल बोर्ड का जो सिलेबस है वो फेडरल बोर्ड ने अपने हिसाब से जो अपनी बुक्स थी वो प्रिंट की और वो बेच दी जितनी उनकी ज़रूरत थी हर साल तो इस साल हुकूमत ने अभी ये फैसला कर जाए कश्मीर हुकूमत ने किया है कि फेडरल बोर्ड की किताबें जो है वो यहाँ के पढ़ाई जाए आज़ाद कश्मीर में तो अब किताबों का जो है वो शार्टेज हो चुका है this is not the first time issues like these often hang in balance as they meet a bureaucratic blockade at the behest of Islamabad. Locals claim Pakistan government is least bothered about their concerns and aspirations. Well, Taliban spokesperson Zabiullah Mujahid said on Monday that acting Foreign Minister Amir Khan Muttaki in the meeting with U.S. officials in Doha stressed the need for the removal of sanctions. About $7 billion in Afghan Central Bank funds were frozen in the Federal Reserve Bank of New York after the Taliban took power. Zabiullah said that Muttaki urged the U.S. to not create obstacles for the economic development of Afghanistan. Meanwhile, the U.S. State Department said following two days of talks, Washington was open to technical talks on economic stability and discussions on combating narcotics trafficking. U.S. Envoys Thomas West and Rina Amiri repeated concerns about deteriorating human rights and called on the Taliban to reverse bans on girls' secondary education and women's employment. No country has formally recognized the Taliban so far since it returned to power in 2021 when U.S.-led foreign forces withdrew after a 20-year conflict. The United States on Monday raised concern over the political environment in Bangladesh after a protest by opposition BNP supporters against Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina turned violent this past weekend. State Department spokesperson Matthew Miller said the U.S. is concerned about political violence and intimidation in Bangladesh and urges the Sheikh Hasina administration to investigate reports of violence impartially. He said Bangladesh government needs to create a safe environment for people to voice their concerns. In recent months, Western governments and right groups have accused PM Hasina's administration for cracking down on anti-government protest. However, her government denies the charges, calling it an interference in Bangladesh's internal affairs. Concerned about the reports of intimidation and political violence in Bangladesh surrounding this weekend's political protests, we encourage the government of Bangladesh uh, uh, to investigate reports of violence, violence thoroughly, transparently, and impartially, and to hold the perpetrators of violence to account. We urge Bangladesh to create a safe environment for people to peacefully assemble and voice their concerns. An artist are renovating an ancient Buddhist manuscript with gold at the Golden Temple in Nepal's Patandarbar Square. The text contains 8,000 verses delivered by Gautam Buddha to his disciples. Take a look. In the courtyards of the Golden Temple in Nepal's ancient Patandarbar Square, several artists are renovating an about eight centuries old Buddhist manuscript with gold. During the annual exercise in the month of Purusottam, artists spent nearly three to four hours daily to rewrite and reinstate gold into faded words in the scripture called Pragya Paramita. The scripture is said to have been prepared by a monk named Ananda Bichu during Abhyamala's regime. Written in Ranjana script, it contains 8,000 verses delivered by Gautam Buddha to his disciples. Gautam Buddha 
तेलाई नहीं आधार बनाए रहते हैं और ये सब मचाए हैं हमने यो पटक गरे रहे हमने दस सौडी गरी सके हमने सही यो बन्ना पहला पनी जो ना हमरो बुआ रुले अब हमरो बाजे रुले गर्नो होते हो ते अनुसार सही यही मल मास नहीं महीना पारे रहते हैं गर्ने होना लेते हैं तेल नहीं हमले फॉलो गरे रहते हैं और ये सब मुपनी हमले यही मल मास में मात्रे यो जिन्नोडार को कार्य स in case of tearing or damage beyond repair, rewriting is done on a special lokta, commonly known as Nepali Kagas. The paper, dyed in dark blue ink, becomes strong and retains the special gold ink very well. Well, that's all in tonight's edition. We'll see the same time tomorrow. Good night. Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India.